What's going on everybody? So I thought I'd do an updated toolbox slash tool cart tour uh, and kind of give you guys an update on what's going on with all of my boxes and carts. As you can see, I have a lot of carts. I'll explain why in the video and just kind of go uh, in detail of why that is for now. Um, the short version is that it was cheaper uh, than buying a new box. So that's the way I went. Um, but anyways, I've gotten a lot of new tools. I've had to change and move stuff around. I've gotten more organizational stuff going on. So a lot of stuff has changed. And I think I recorded these vertical last time. So you'll be able to watch this full screen now. So um, as you can see, this is my Diag cart. This is my uh, 72 inch Master Series. Then I've got the uh, cart here that I use for storage. This one I'm actually selling, so it doesn't really have anything in it. It's got a mess of stuff on top because I've been recording today. And then this is my main cart that I use every day. Uh, so we'll get into that. I think I'm gonna make this into two parts. We'll see where I end up as far as the video. I'm not gonna go in ultra depth about everything, but I do wanna explain some of the stuff I have in the box. So like I said, this is my Diag cart. This is my Varus Edge and I've got the touchscreen monitor hooked up. And then let me move this. I was recording and then I won an air hammer on the tool truck. So I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with that because I already have one. But um, so then I use my Apollo D9 as well. I use that for pre and post scans because it's way faster. And then I'll use that when I need to go in more depth or use the lab scope or whatever. So I have both of those. And normally this is actually a lot cleaner up here because I've got all of my cables ran underneath, which you can see one of the HDMI cables here, but I ran all of my cables up underneath here. So that way it was organized and it works because this drawer is open because normally there's a printer in here. So it actually keeps everything really nice and clean. It's just not right now because, well, I guess that's just normal life. Um, so in this drawer, I've got my Pico scope with my Jarhead Diagnostics case on it. Then I've got my Cardac Plus 3 for programming. My Altel BT609 battery tester for uh, obviously battery testing. And then it also has scan data as well. So anytime that I can't find the data I need on my snap-ons, I use that. And it usually, usually that works every now and again, even between the two of them, I don't get the data that I need. That's the story of scan tools, I feel like, nowadays. Uh, I've got my Thermal Imager Elite there, and then this is the WPS kit, and there's my uh, WPS 500 for uh, pressure readings, pressure sensor. Um, my multimeter, and I've got two test lights, an LED one and an incandescent one. Uh, the command circuit tester from Jarhead Diagnostics couple of fused loops for doing like amperage testing and such like that. Uh, some DMM leads. I've got some piercing probes, some terminal uh, probes or connectors, some back probes in there, a bunch of alligator clips, just a bunch of random uh, connectors and such. And then obviously some retractable leads. The next drawer down, we've got our pulse sensor. We've got our Pico leads uh, for the uh, wiring. Uh, I'll show you for the next one. Then I've got my attenuator under here, a parasitic draw tester, my actual Pico leads, my Warwick uh, leads for my uh, Varus Edge, which I got from Jarhead Diagnostics. So I'll use my Varus Edge for the lab scope sometimes, and then I'll pull out the Pico if I need to. Just depends on what I'm doing. If I just need to do a quick check, then I'll just use the Varus because I've usually got it out anyways. Uh, but if I need to do something more in depth or more in depth testing, then I'll pull out the Pico scope because I, the, it's way more user friendly uh, as far as when you're making uh, captures and stuff. So I got my low amp probe, my high amp probe from Pico, and then I've got this as well. It's a multimeter and an amp uh, probe, amp tester, but I, the jaws are bigger. So sometimes if you need the bigger jaws, that's why I've got that one as well. So I think it's the same. I think it reads the same as this one, essentially. I can't remember, but I've got my OBD breakout box. And then this is what those other leads are for to check uh, ignition. And then um, some just random wiring, some connectors, some, uh, 
some, gosh, I don't know, heat shrink and why the word escapes me. Some rat tape for rodent damage and stuff like that. Nothing crazy. Some terminal kit, uh, my little mini torch, which I don't really like, but I know a lot of people do like that. My, uh, my soldering gun, which I love for a Milwaukee, my multi probe and my stethoscope. And then on the outside of this cart, we've got our, the uh, hanger from Jarhead Diagnostics. I've got my high amp light, light load tester and my low amp tester, my spool holder, some extra leads for my DMM. And then I've got some uh, hangers here, which I actually haven't, I just hung them up there and I haven't actually used them because I have just been really busy with the shop and then uh, recording content and stuff. So I think I'll just go to this next cart here. Top is pretty messy. I've got some uh, some uh, pry bars up here and then I keep my brake pedal depressor there for when I'm doing uh, digital inspections so that I can check brake lights. Um, and just, I was charging up my bore scope and this is where I charge up a lot of my lights and stuff. These are just some uh, little customer gifts we were given out in November, December, some uh, Yankee candles and whatnot. I've got more pry bars over here. And then I've got some old socket trays and uh, magnetic trays and stuff that I don't, I don't use the socket trays much anymore, um, but I do still use those a lot. All right, and then the top drawer, we've got some half size flip sockets. So 18 and a half, 19 and a half, it's for your swollen lug nuts and such. Battery terminal cleaner, which I have two of for some reason. Uh, some tape measures. Miscellaneous clips, gloves, bit kit, the extra part of my plier rack, some Evercraft Napa crow's feet, which actually are amazing and they were super cheap. My snap-on tap and die kit, Cornwell rethreading kit, my easy outs here. I, I wanted a stubby kit because usually that's what you always find is they break a lot easier with the longer ones. So that's what I wanted uh, those for. And then my adapter kit for my snap-on brake pressure bleeder, my fuel adapter kits for my fuel services, an old half-inch Milwaukee impact that I don't hardly use anymore, the Hyperstep Matco bits, which are amazing. If you've ever used them, you'll know that. The, I think the patent is up now, so you can actually get them from the company that actually makes them, so you can get them a little bit less. Uh, exhaust expander, and then some extra filters for my a parts washer, which is like just a small tabletop parts washer, uh, but it actually works really well. And I've got the Blue Point uh, Master Kit for Torx, E-Torx, and uh, Allen, or Hex, whatever you want to call it. Some extra Allens, and then a rear brake shoe kit here. And then this is my ball joint uh, drawer, basically. So I've got my ball joint press, obviously, here my Honda Acura compliance bushing adapter kit, and then I've got a Honda Acura ball joint adapter kit, plus all of the adapters that come with the BB, BPJ1 from Snap-on, as well as the seal kit for that. And then I've got um, my uh, chisels and punches as well from Harbor Freight, which actually have worked really good. And then I've got the OTC hub grappler kit, and I have the uh, grinder here as well. This is just from Harbor Freight. Nothing fancy, but I don't use a grinder a ton. So I think I will. We're at nine minutes already. So I'm going to break this up into two parts and I will do this one here, my main box, and then I'll finish up with my uh, main cart on the next video. So if you have any questions about this video or anything that you saw specifically in the video, as far as part numbers or specific, uh, organizational stuff or whatever, just throw them down in the comments and I'll get you a part number or I'll get you a link or something and I'll, I'll help you out the best I can. Appreciate you guys watching. Take it easy.